In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, Satan and the demons are attacking the church with every means at their disposal. Although the gates of hell will never prevail against the Catholic Church, it is currently enduring its darkest hours in its long history. Evil people and demons are attacking and persecuting her as much as it's in their power to do so. In addition, almost every facet of society has been corrupted in order to bring about the ruin of souls, especially through immorality, lies, false teachings, and diabolical disorientation. Despite Christ's sacrifice upon the cross for our redemption, many do not choose to believe and obey his commandments. More than in any other time in history, people are meddling with evil practices and the occult. As a result, countless souls put themselves in direct contact with demons. In their battle against Christ in the Catholic Church, Satan and the demons use large numbers of wicked people as their allies. After the Second Vatican Council, the majority of clergy apostatized from the faith as communists, ecumenists, Freemasons, and modernists formed the conciliar church and hundreds of millions of souls lost the faith. In 1921, Father E. Sylvester Berry commented on Satan's final effort to destroy the Catholic Church, a war unto death. Antichrist and his prophet will introduce ceremonies to imitate the sacraments of the church. In fact, there will be a complete organization, a church of Satan set up in opposition to the Church of Christ. Their ceremonies will counterfeit the sacraments. Father Faber describes the last stage of the church in the reign of Antichrist. He says that Antichrist will be immoral, have immense talents and wealth, and will be unparalleled in deceit, deceiving even the elect. His doctrine will be an apparent contradiction of no religion, yet a new religion. Antichrist will assert that he is the Messiah. Father Faber has written that the kingdom of Antichrist will extend and influence over the whole world. When his empire is at its apex, it will last for three and a half years. People will worship the image of Antichrist and wear his mark. In his book, The Holy Eucharist, St. Alphonsus has written, it's true, the mass will cease on earth at the time of the Antichrist. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is to be suspended for 1,290 days, that is, three years, six months, and a half, according to the prophecy of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 11. The majority of Christians will apostatize, but the church will not be destroyed. The church's last enemy is the kingdom of Antichrist. My dearly beloved in Christ, some people will remain faithful to our Lord in the Catholic Church, and many will be martyred. Father Faber said the horror of Antichrist persecution against them will be unparalleled. People will be in fear and terror. Saints will be greater than ever, martyrs greater. As the first fought against men, the latter will fight against devils. They will be Our Lady's saints, namely, through the total consecration to Jesus through Mary, as taught by St. Louis Marie de Montfort. The book, Begone Satan, is an account of an exorcism that took place in Erling, Iowa in 1928. The victim was a woman cursed by her father and possessed from her 16th to her 40th year. After a 23-day exorcism, the devil was forced to leave. The devil disclosed some things of general interest. In 1928, he said that it was self-evident that the rage of Antichrist would soon be directed against the Catholic Church. Out of the mouth of the possessed woman, the demon spoke. We read the signs of the times. This is the last century. When people write the year 2000, the end will be at hand. Regarding the coming of Antichrist, Anna Catherine Emmerich has written, I heard that Lucifer would be freed for a time, 50 or 60 years 
before the year 2000 AD. Of course, this was just prior to the Second Vatican Council. A number of other devils would be released somewhat earlier as a punishment and source of temptation to sinful human beings. My dearly beloved in Christ, we should wisely follow the suggestion of our Lord and try to understand the signs of the times. It's getting closer. According to the signs foretold in Scripture, Antichrist may come onto the scene soon, sooner than you think. All the signs foretelling his coming have already taken place. The gospel has been preached throughout the world. The Jews have returned to Palestine. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy. The great apostasy or universal loss of faith has occurred, and there is worldwide moral corruption and persecution of the church. Since the time of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Paradise, God has permitted Satan and the demons to tempt souls and constantly try to sabotage their efforts to acquire holiness. Those temptations are direct orders from Satan to his demons. They especially people, they especially hate people who pray much. My dear the beloved in Christ, the coming of Antichrist opens the decisive conflict between the church and the powers of hell. It shall be a complete realization of the prophecy of Genesis. I will put enmities between thee and the woman, thy seed and her seed. The seed of the serpent is Antichrist and his followers. The seed of the woman is Mary. The seed of Mary the woman is Jesus Christ and his faithful disciples. My dearly beloved in Christ, we must prepare for what's coming because time is short. Antichrist will catch people unaware. Fools, they'll adore him. Fools, they'll think he's great. Fools, they'll be tricked into thinking he's a great, great person. Most people will think that Antichrist is honest, loving, and kind, but he's evil, and he will turn on everyone like a poisonous snake. It's likely that when the world is in chaos, Antichrist will appear and rule the world. This will be Satan's ultimate victory. The majority will follow him because he will perform many false miracles bring peace to a war-torn world, and help those who will be lacking resources like food. Prior to his coming, there may be famine in many places, and food will be scarce. Since deception is one of the specialties of Satan, people will be deceived when Antichrist comes. The deception will be worldwide. Everyone will have to pay homage to him and take his mark to survive. No one can buy or sell or move about freely without it. Even priests will take his mark. My dearly beloved in Christ, many will be divided and ostracized from families who want to take his mark. Those who take the mark of Antichrist will be his forever. Once they're marked, there's no turning back. For some, the mark of Antichrist will become a horrible cancer. Christ's resurrection from the dead was a triumph over the powers of darkness. Our Lord will come again to earth, but this time he will come in glory and will conquer Antichrist. Those who have remained faithful and been waiting for him will be happy and joyful. Those who did not believe will finally see the truth. Despite Satan's evil plans, success, and accomplishments, our Lord will defeat Antichrist. Christ will triumph in spite of all his enemies. The Jews will be converted and the words of Jesus Christ will be fulfilled. There shall be one fold and one shepherd. The Blessed Virgin Mary will crush Satan's head and in the end, her immaculate heart will triumph. My dearly beloved in Christ, we must prepare for Satan's deception and for what's ahead by being very humble, prayerful, and vigilant. In order to persevere into the end, we must also have a total and complete trust and faith in God 
and a strong devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Frequently attend the holy sacrifice of the Mass and receive the sacraments often. If you're currently living in the state of mortal sin, come back to God and go to confession as soon as possible before it's too late. We must make a continued effort to fulfill God's will in our life. Despite being faced with opposition and many difficulties and failures. Let us fear no evil because the Lord is with us. In the days ahead, we must be exemplary followers of Christ by the fervor and frequency of our prayers, by our self denial and practicing charity to others, including the forgiveness of our enemies, by our strictness with ourselves and by our perseverance in the practices of penance and fasting. We must place ourselves under Mary's mantle and live in union with her. My dearly beloved in Christ, we all need to pray more. Pray, pray, pray without ceasing. Pray five decades of the rosary faithfully every day and more if you can. Avoid extreme thoughts and talking about things that will disturb your peace of soul and mind. In these moments especially, turn to God in prayer. Pray and do penance for the conversion of sinners and the salvation of souls. Pray fervently to the Holy Ghost for discernment so you will not be deceived. Mother Mary Potter powerfully describes the path we must take if we wish to be faithful to the end. At the time of the Passion of our Lord, that most fearful time of the domination of Satan, when he was allowed a power, he will never be allowed again. Though, and the church has already commenced the season of persecution, trial, and temptation, in which she will, in herself, represent again the Passion of our Lord. At that memorable time, who I ask you were the faithful ones that continued to our Lord to the end. In the time of general temptation, even, when even St. Peter denied the master he loved so well, who were the happy ones, blessed with a special happiness for all eternity for their faithfulness in that terrible hour, who did not abandon their Lord when he, for their sakes, was seemingly abandoned even by his heavenly Father, who hoped and trusted in him when others despaired, who, though weeping, adored, while the world around scoffed and mocked. Who were they, and whence had they the strength to stand when others fell? Who were they? Whence had they this great grace? Weigh well the answer, those who remained in company of Mary. From her all-powerful intercession, they received this great grace. As it was then, so will it be again. And it will be well for us to think of this earnestly, seriously, not carelessly, but with thought and prayer. You will say, but have we not already great devotion to Our Lady? Do we not all love her? Before answering, I will question you. Had not St. Peter devotion to Our Lady? Did he not love her as likewise the other apostles? Yes, oh yes, but St. John, who had learned from the heart of his master the love most pleasing to it, also learned the devotion most efficacious to himself. It was a child's devotion to its mother. On the cross, our Lord but proclaimed and cemented what had been before. Therefore, in the time of trial, St. John sought the company of his mother, according to the revelations of the saints, returning to her house heartbroken with the account of what had happened to Jesus. It was in her company that St. John and the holy women walked the weary way to Calvary. In closing, Our Lady's own may have crosses that would break a less strong spirit than the one they have obtained from Mary but they have been strengthened by her in an especial manner. And the, and the hour of trial finds them prepared 
and trusting in her maternal care so that they walk safely through dangerous places, or rather they feel carried, secure as a child feels in his mother's arms, even if she were to carry it into the midst of a raging battle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.